Well, good morning. Just getting out here to the Peace River, doing some checking on this river flow. Out here at the little dock area. It's a place called Homeland. The river has been up very high and I'm waiting for it to go down so I can do a little bit of shark tooth hunting, but it still seems to be up a little bit. Yeah, trying to look out for some uh, content for y'all. I think you're going to enjoy this. I'll go up river since I'm by myself this morning and then work back down. Got my new uh, depth finder in here. So, uh, got a new video coming out. Um, this is the intro to it. And uh, what I wanted to say about that is those that are thinking about doing the loop or really anything substantial trips like this, um, I hope that this video teaches you that problems are going to occur and to how to overcome them. Um, that's what this video is all about is when the problem occurs, work through it. It's a work, it's a process. Don't look at the entire problem, but look at it as small pieces. And if you look at it like that, you'll find that it's a lot easier to deal with than trying to look at the whole big problem or whole big picture. Look at the beauty of this Peace River. Oh my goodness. It's something, boy. I tell you. Can't wait to get out here and get doing some shark toothing. But anyways, hope y'all enjoyed the video. And I'm going to uh, keep doing some exploring up here, up the river. I'm hoping to see a few gators get you some pictures and videos of that. Should be some big ones. And some deer here early this morning. So, And I actually got to go to work after this. I got up early. So I could... Um, get down here and shoot this video uh, the afternoons it's been raining so I'm trying to get up ahead of time tried to get up here ahead of time turkeys big old turkey get out here ahead of time and beat the rain so then I'll get on back to work work for a few hours and then be back off so it's kind of like uh, y'all's life was a lot of y'all I'm sure that are working you got to get out and do the dash anyways. You just got to make time. Y'all take care. Great Loop 2021 Part 9. We made it into LaBelle. I did some repairs on Good Times and got her running and met some really cool people. Okay, I want to give you an overhead on um, where we are in this video. And at this point in time, we're at LaBelle. We're going to move just a little further up to uh, LaBelle Marina. Okay, so we've switched over to the satellite view and we are right here. Um, and I have a very short distance to go to go to LaBelle Marina, Port LaBelle as it's known. Um, and it's a cool little marina. It's very inexpensive, though it doesn't have a, a very many amenities. It doesn't have power on the dock. There is water, but you have to come back over to the main dock to get it. But it is a really cheap place. I think it was a couple hundred bucks to stay here. And I ended up, we ended up coming in here first and then moving the boat over to a slip over here that was free. And like I said, this was going to be a place to keep good times while we worked on the engines in Contiki. So basically, I don't have a lot of video from being at Port LaBelle Marina. This was just a place that I was going to keep good times while we were working on Contiki over here at the uh, Glades Boatyard. 
it was about a 12 mile ride from here back into Glades. The original plan was to get across to the East Coast and I had a couple jobs that I would finish up while we were waiting on the weather because at times it was quite chilly here as you'll see. Um, but when the engines went down and we needed to fix them, we had to do what we had to do. So <clears throat> wanted to kind of show you, I live, I live up in the central part of the state up here. And what basically I would do is I would get off, uh, do my jobs and try to get off early on Friday and drive down and then get down here to the Glades Boat Yard, usually early afternoon. And um, Marty would have prepped up anything that needed to be done. And then we together would do all the heavy work, you know, you know, really all to pulling the engines and stuff like that. Uh, I would work, you know, stay here the whole weekend usually and just sleep on the good times there at the marina. Of Port LaBelle Marina and then work each day there. Uh, it went on for about a month doing the work and I'll show you some video of that. So the engine swap outs took just about a month uh, to do and um, I'm not when I'm not going to go into that every little bit of that. I have a video actually a series of videos on my channel if you want to see um, what it takes to get engines out and put them back in. Really, I did the very same engines in, in good times, and I'll leave a link in the description, and I'll leave a note here for you to see. But I will go through the highlights, and I will show you where we got the engines from, and I believe they're very trustworthy, and they're good quality engines. So let's check that out. So this video has a lot to do with overcoming problems whenever you have them if you've ever thinking about doing the great loop uh, hopefully you are and this will be an inspiration to show you how to work through it this is a time lapse going back in to glade's boat yard when you do something or an undertaking like this um, you're going to surely run into problems and you need to learn how to work through the problems because they are definitely going to occur. If you are looking for a reason to give up, trust me, you will find it. Song again. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, my bees? Oh my so this is Con Tiki, <clears throat> and today we're gonna do a beginning a engine swap out. She's a 31 foot Chris Craft. Okay, um, we're getting ready to start the motor removal. Actually, Marty's already down there uh, pulling off the cables, but at this point, all he's done is um, removed the wires, and you notice he's got them marked very well, and um, most everything else is still connected. He's starting to disconnect the uh, transmission uh, cables, and every boat's a little different on that, so you kind of got to do what whatever your style is, but... I'm getting ready to release uh, each one of these for the risers and the manifolds and just lay them off to the side and then we'll go from there. So your, your manifolds and risers have four bolts and they come in from the side. I like to use an air tool that makes life a lot easier. That's the wake up tool in case anybody's still sleeping. Going to be the uh, tranny cooler too. Which is, I'm going to slide it over and get it off of these. There we go. 
So when you're doing this, you've got to be very careful. You can break off your, matter of fact, we touched that. See that? Mm -hmm. You've got to be very, we probably need to replace that. Oh yeah, yeah. So we don't have no, yeah, yeah. it's probably a good time to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to be very careful of putting these on. All right, as you can see the alternator, the way it would be in the way. So we're gonna pull that off in this water pump. So that'll be the next thing to do. There's only, you got for this alternator, you got three here bolts and one down there. Three here, one down there. Next thing is the water pump. We could probably leave it, but we're gonna take it off. There's two bolts here, and there's two here, and that should release the water pump. I think they still have a nice thick uh, fiberglass in 1980 though. Yeah, yeah. gonna be four total. Fixing to get the last one. Alright, All right, this is the last bolt. And then this it's usually the longest one. This one is a longer bolt. Okay. And yep, alright, so those were all water pump bolts. Now that is should be just like that. All right. Oh Lord, have mercy. Where's that uh, big flat head you had? And it's rusted as all get out. Good thing I got a new water pump, huh? Yep. Yeah. That it is. That broke. I swear it used to make a little grindy noise. Did it? Yeah, and that's usually water pumping it. Well. Yep. Yep. The grinding is exactly what mine did. Hold that. I'm gonna hold this and spin the right pump out. Oh my god. 
Mm, okay. Let's try this. Ew. Ew. <laughs> okay. Ready. Yeah, that thing I'd say was going bad. This, this part's real nice. Why don't they make the whole thing like that? We got that water pump loose. There's just four bolts you come off. They're painting the butt. You got to work them, but they'll come off. Now we're getting ready to disconnect the transmission from the prop shaft. And then we're ready to take our bolts out here for the mounts. There's four of them. And that's probably going to release it. Now, we got the propeller shaft. There's a couple of them, coupler on it. And then there's a coupler on the back of the transmission. And they come together. And they're, they're held together with four bolts. So time when we take that off, we're essentially separating the, the transmission from the propeller shaft. So let's do that. Make sure that's all the way on there. Aye, aye. There you go. All right. Three, two, one, and... I can use two hands. on that front one? Uh, maybe. Maybe with a... Do you need a little... There it is. I got it. That's where that tool comes in handy. That's where it makes life easy. Yeah. Yeah, I need something to hold that front one. That And the top one? Yep. nuts out until we spin yep. this. So let's see if we give it a little spin. Out it comes. Hopefully. There it is. Good. Couple more. And we're going. Soon it'll be time to put the uh, or take the uh, motor mounts off and let this motor fly. There we go. Look at that. I'm turning all right, couple things I want to say real quick. Number one, um, put you some some covers down. These are moving blankets. Save your carpet. And I can tell you from experience that that sucks to get done. Then you got to replace your carpet. Mm -hmm. Number two is if you get to a bolt that's just having a hard time, you know, getting it out. Stop, reassess what you're doing, and because you're probably, you know, doing what's what's Elon Musk say? If you're doing something hard, it's probably wrong. Yes. Um, and there's nothing wrong with stopping and starting fresh. That's right. Walk and, away for yeah, a minute. Yeah. A lot of times in construction, we would uh, have something that was giving us a real hard time. And if it was towards the end of the day, we'd just walk away. That's right. We'd come or back take in, the lunch. Yes. Come back in the morning, whenever, yep. later, uh, with a fresh mind, and all of a sudden, things work. And you... It, Trying so. to rush something is a recipe for disaster. When you break a bolt, round a bolt, or whatever, so... Yeah. Always. So what are we doing here? We're taking the uh, uh, taking, taking the mounts out, bolts out here. Mm -hmm. The legs. Yep. This impact tool is the bomb. I, I actually bought this. Good lord. <laughs> that wasn't easy getting on. I bought this actually to change uh, change tires. I 
have so many trailers I'll be on the side of the road. I uh, get flat tires. That's what I use it the most for. To release the motor, you have four motor mounts. Each one has two bolts. And when you release them, after you release it from the uh, the transmission from the prop, that thing is pretty much free. Now, what will be a couple of things we'll check as we're easing it out. But uh, that's the extent of it. It's really not that hard. An old fireman can do it. I'm sure you can do it. It can be daunting. You don't have to be a mechanic. You just got to have, in my opinion, good common sense. Yeah. See, with good common sense, you can work through anything. One thing Marty's doing is, just so we don't run into a problem, we're labeling every bolt. Just make sure. Stuff like this, it'll make it go smooth. We don't want a whole bunch of extra parts when we're done. That's right. I mean, you do this, it's just, it's just. Yeah, it's just taking a bolt out, putting it back in. That's all of the. It's heavy, it's, you know. Yeah. It can be dangerous. You don't want to drop the motor on your foot or anything like that. But... It's not rocket science. Nope. Okay guys, we're reaching that time for this video, so we're going to end it here. Y'all come on back next time, we're going to pull that starboard engine out of there. And we're going to get it over and over to Angel's shop and get it swapped out. If you enjoyed the video, how about go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It takes a good bit of time to make these videos. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to see what happens next. And anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.